what are typical chart questions on the FAA Part 107 exam? So to get familiar with the charts that you will be using on the Part 107 exam, I suggest that you go to the FAA Computer Testing Supplements page. Just type into Google FAA Computer Testing Supplements. It will bring you right to this page. If you haven't already, you should download this document right here, the Airman Knowledge Testing Supplement for Sport Pilot, Recreational Pilot, Remote Pilot, and Private Pilot. So what this is, this is the testing supplement that you will be given on testing day at your testing center. You do not need to bring this with you, but the FAA does provide it to you now so you can look at it, be familiar with it, and so on testing day, it is not your first time seeing this document. And what that is, is you'll have certain questions that will say refer to figure 19 area 3 or refer to figure 21 or refer to figure 82. It doesn't matter, but there will be a specific figure. It will ask you to go look up in that uh, guide and it will ask you a question about whatever it is there. It might be a chart. It might be a diagram. It could be a, a couple of different things. But for the purposes of this video, I want to show you the different VFR sectionals that you will encounter on the computer testing supplement. So you're going to go ahead and download that document. I've already got it downloaded here and I'm on page 53. It looks like I'm on and this is going to be in Appendix 2 where the sectional charts start. So I'm on figure 20 in Appendix 2. And so there are a couple of different sort of, um, you know, just uh, screenshots or prints of just little spots of VFR sectionals. And so you might get a question. So let's say it says refer to figure 20 area one. And it will ask you, it, so it's just a way to sort of direct your eyes to this particular area of the chart. And it may ask you a question, you know, figure 20 area one, what is the floor of the most outermost ring of the class Charlie airspace? And so what you'll have to do is come out here and look and find the floor of the outermost ring. And, you know, we can see that right here that it's 1200 feet. So you might get a question that it's just trying to refer you to a specific spot. So these numbers right here are not something that's generally printed on the VFR sectional. It's just there for the purposes of the test and to help you just to help direct your eyes to the right spot. So you're going to want to know the different classes of airspace. So you have to be able to identify that this is a class Charlie airspace. You need to be able to identify that this is class Delta airspace. You need to be able to come down here and identify what these transition areas mean. Um, you also need to know all the different types of special use airspace. So we've got a couple different warning areas here. We've got an ADIS over here. Um, you know, we got it looks like we've got some special flight rules. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this chart. If you can't remember a symbol, if you can't remember, you know, you, maybe you get a question about like, what does this flag mean right here? And you just can't remember. If you go all the way back up to the beginning of the document, or if you're at, on testing day, it's the beginning of the book, it's got the legend. So when you're looking at the actual, you know, printed VFR sectional, the legend's going to be in the margins of the sectional, right? Well, your testing supplement isn't formatted quite that same way. It's actual, when you get it on testing day, it's actual like workbook booklet type thing. So the very beginning of the book is going to have the legend. So if you can't remember a symbol, you can't remember what something means, go look at that legend in the beginning of the book. You're also going to need to be able to answer questions about the different, um, the different colors of the surface of the, um, the sectionals. So you can see here we've got a blue, or I'm sorry, a green uh, shade here, and then we go into more of a beige color over here. You need to be able to to really answer the reasons you know why that why that shading changes. And so, if you look on this uh, sectional uh, figure twenty one sectional chart excerpt, it's got a diagram here. It's a legend to show you all the different what the different shadings mean. So in this, we've got this darker khaki color, darker green color. Um, you know, we so we can tell our altitude by looking right here. We've got the lighter beige color that you know shows us our altitude right here. So what this tells me by the surface of this chart, wherever this is, is that we've got some lower altitudes over here, but then maybe we've got some hills that are, you know, maybe a thousand feet higher than the surrounding area. So it looks like we might have a, a little bit of a hilly area. So you want to be able to answer those types of questions. You also want to be able to determine latitude and longitude of different, um, different things on the charts. So you might get a question saying, you know, look at this, uh, 
let's see, there is a, say there's a, a private airport right here, and it will ask you to determine the latitude and longitude. So you've got to find your uh, lines of latitude and your lines of longitude here. And so I've got 48, 101, and I can determine based on these tick marks, what is the latitude and longitude of that airport? You might be asked to identify, you know, say Butte, you know, it, you know, find the latitude and longitude of Butte, something like that. So you need to be able to identify the lat longs of any, anything that's on that uh, chart. Again, you're going to need to know all the different symbols and obstacles. So look right here you can see there are some towers in the area you need to know what these numbers mean that these numbers are in um, both msl and agl so mean sea level and above ground level when you are asked to provide altitudes you need to make sure you are clear whether or not you're answering in agl or msl um, so you might get a question saying you know is this 340 msl or is this 2242 AGL. It's, you know, they're really trying to help you help determine if you understand the differences between AGL and MSL. Some other things you're going to need to know are these, this blue number right here, where it's a larger number, and then in a smaller font, there's a second number here. Um, what this means is in this, this like square of latitude and longitude right here, what that means is that 2,600 feet MSL is going to be sort of the safest minimum altitude that you will clear all of the obstacles in this particular area. So what that means is there's probably some sort of obstacle, tower, you know, um, you know it could, could really be anything, that if you fly below 2,600 feet, you're in danger of, um, you know, colliding with that obstacle. So usually what it is is they'll like, and it might be this one right here. What they'll do is they'll find the the highest obstacle in that particular area, and then they'll add a buffer onto it just for errors. You know, you know, maybe maybe this tower isn't quite that. Maybe it's a little bit higher. Um, so what they do is they add on a little bit there to give you know to give that buffer. So um, this is very important for, for manned aircraft pilots as they're flying through this area that they need to know that if they're flying below 2,600 feet, there is a, the danger of um, collision with an obstacle. It looks like there's one right here, 2361. That could possibly be it right there. Add it on a little bit of a buffer. So if we stay at 2,600 feet, um, we'll clear that obstacle. So you need to know that. Um, you need to be able to identify frequencies. So let's look over here at this airport over here. We've got Garrison D05. You might be asked a question of what does this 122.9 mean? What is that for? Um, you know, let's go back up here to some of the controlled airspace, or I'm sorry, the towered airspace here. Um, you know, you may be asked to identify what is the uh, control tower frequency of Elizabeth City Airport. So you need to be able to look at all these different frequencies right here and determine which one is the right answer. You also want to be able to identify the hours of airport operations. So we've got Minot Airport here. Um, it's got a control tower, doesn't have a control tower all the time. It, the control tower isn't open all the time. So to be able to determine the hours of when it is a class Delta airport and it maybe changes to class Echo or a class Gulf airport, you need to be able to know where to find that answer. And so you're not gonna find that on the chart here, you're gonna find that in the chart supplement. So you need to know how to find more detailed information about a particular airport. If you're asked about anything about an airport um, and that information is not on the chart, you need to know how to go look that up in the chart supplement. And then you also need to know how to look up. So if Minot Airport changes from you know, class Delta to maybe class Echo or class Gulf, you know, when the tower is closed, you need to be able to look that up. So that's going to be in the chart supplement under the airspace section of the Minot Airport. So the, um, you, you want to make sure that you understand what kind of information is going to be printed on the VFR sectional chart and what kind of information is going to be printed in the chart supplement and how to determine, you know, if, if it's not in the VFR chart, probably going to go find it in the chart supplement. So those are a couple of the different kinds of chart questions you will get on the part 107 exam. I highly suggest downloading this document. There are a couple different charts on here that, that the questions will refer you to. So you don't want testing day to be the first day that you see this document 
Um, you want to, you know, when you open it up, you want it to be like, oh, I've seen this before. I'm familiar with this chart. Um, and it, it helps to reduce a little bit of that, that uh, testing anxiety that can happen. So look them over. There's several of them, of them here. If you have questions, look at the legend. Um, we've got some complex airspace here. You want to make sure that you understand all the different things that are happening with all these smaller airports around the class Bravo Air, airport. So testing day should not be the first time you see these. Make sure you download it, read them over. You can also buy a printed copy of this, um, which is helpful. Um, but if you do, there are some people on Amazon that are selling these and they're coming in black and white. They're printing them in black and white. And as you can tell, the color coding on some of these things are a very important part of being able to read these successfully. So those are a couple of different kinds of questions that you will get about VFR sectional charts on your FAA Part 107 exam.